So today we are exploring another watercolor technique and this time it's glazing. Glazes are transparent layers of paint applied to modify or enhance underlying layers. Colors are applied in thin, transparent layers, one at a time, letting each one dry before adding another layer. Glazing is the color appearance of the final painting after the layering. Now, let's do a straightforward example of glazing in watercolor. Here, I have a scrap piece of watercolor paper that I have put down three swatches on to allow them to dry so that we can do a glazing example. But first, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here, you will see my swatch sheet for the White Knight tube set. As you look at the swatch sheet, you will see that each color has a difference in depth perception and variation based on the number of glazes or layers I put on the swatch. So basically I started with a watery one layer swatch for each one. And then for each element, I glazed on a different swatch just so I can see the difference in saturation and the color that could be built from one particular paint color. So here we have one layer, here we have two layers, and here we have three layers. And you're able to see between the torso, the hair, as well as the tail, the difference in saturation and value based on the number of glazes or layers that were used. Now that you see what I'm talking about, let's actually do an example. So I'm going to wet a brush and the counter paint set I'm using is completely irrelevant for this. I just want you guys to see the example of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to mix out some of the original color here and get it on my brush. And what I want to do is lightly glaze a second layer on top of the first. As you can see, automatically, the depth and color starts to change and build. Let's do the next one. I was using this green, and these are just colors I put down just to show you the example. And now after mixing that out on my palette, I'm simply gonna glaze that layer on top of the previous one. And once this one dries, you will be able to see the difference from the first swatch layer to the actual glaze layer. Let's do one more just for good measure. All right. And after I get my brush loaded, I am going to simply layer that on top of the previous layer, therefore performing the glazing technique. Now, once that I'm going to simply layer that on top of the previous layer, therefore performing the glazing technique. Now, once that dries, we will be able to see the difference from the first layer to the second layer and how the second layer helped to build the complete color. Keeping in mind that we did learn just earlier in the video that glazing is simply layering transparent watercolor on top of a previously dried layer. I will also add that I have used paints for glazing that were not completely transparent. I've used semi-transparent paints. I've used semi-opaque paints. Uh, the thing about the opaque into the gouache area, they typically cover more than they glaze. So you do kind of want to keep it to the transparent, semi-transparent, maybe semi-opaque colors in order to achieve the exact look you're looking for in glazing. Building up layers by glazing helps to create depth and complexity. Glazing is particularly effective in watercolor because most paints have a transparent nature, allowing light to pass through the layers to create rich, luminous paintings. Okay, friends, let's take a closer look at that. So we started with a pre-existing wash of color, and then we are glazing an additional wash on top, therefore building the saturation, the depth, the complexity of the color, so that it's even bolder and brighter and more beautiful. 
So, hey there, family. I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you and to let you all know you are really amazing. And if you happen to have liked this video up to this point, please go ahead and sprinkle a little love by hitting that thumbs up. It really helps the channel out and prompts YouTube to put it in front of other wonderful viewers just like yourself. Okay, let's stay focused. Okay, friends, let's really get into the heart of this video by putting what we have learned into practice. For this, I have already transferred my image into my sketchbook, and here we will proceed with applying our first layer of paint. Throughout doing the first layer, you will see me pre-wet some areas and other areas I won't. This is also a second field test for the White Knight tube set, and since I know the blues granulated, I decided to use them to paint the bottle on my page. This technique of dropping wet paint onto wet paper or into other wet paint should seem really familiar to you. The very first watercolor technique video released in this series was on wet into wet painting. So I am employing that technique in certain areas as I paint the first layer. This will help give me a variety in color and color depth to build upon once I actually start the glazing step. On the bottle, I did use the cobalt blue for the base wash and then dropped ultramarine into that wash and just let those colors bleed and blend as they saw fit. This is going to help create depth in our composition during the first wash. You just wait to see how gorgeous that will be to glaze upon. As I tackle the greenery on the page, I was sure to do things in the same way. Some leaves done wet into wet, some leaves done wet on dry. However, that's a technique we will explore much more in a future video. I was sure to use the cobalt blue to mix into all of my greens. This was to make sure that I maintained color harmony as I attempted to make a variety of greens for the composition. Some of my washes were super watery and other washes were applied in mass tone. Friends, all of these little tricks help to build towards a more complete composition in your first layer. Lessening the amount of work you will have to do to the composition as the painting progresses. I was sure to make sure that each group of leaves were a different shade. In nature, you would see all shades of greens mixed throughout leaves. I wanted to imply that feeling in this painting as much as possible. You will also notice that I was sure to leave out white spaces as I painted my leaves. This allowed me to use the white of the paper to start to put in my highlights. Now, this is a nice change from the normal way I do things, which is with a white gel pen, a white acrylic paint pen, white gouache, or an opaque white colored pencil. I also wanted to point out the brush I am using. I chose a dagger brush to paint in this first layer. It's a very versatile tool. It allowed me to make slim, crisp lines with the tilt and to feel more broader strokes with the belly. I could honestly paint this entire composition with this one brush. For the flower, I used the cad yellow as the base to paint the center of the flower and then use yellow ochre as the shadowing color. I will have to be sure to mix yellow ochre in during the glazing to continue my color harmony effort I was making for this painting. I decided to mix a purple using the cobalt and the more magenta leaning red of the set. Once again, you will see me use all of the little tricks I did to paint in everything else on this page, friends. I did use the violet included in the set in its mass tone to add a wet into wet shadow and helping to map out where I might want to glaze my darker color as I continue with the painting. And now here we are, friends, with what the composition looks like after the first layer has been applied and has dried. Now, if you would like to, you could stop right here. If you feel comfortable and don't want to move any further, that is perfectly okay. But what I'm going to do at this particular point is continue on to the glazing step so that we can add some 
depth, some complexity, some deeper values and shadows to our composition. So let's check it out. Okay, my dear friends, it is time to jump into the glazing and watch the magic it unlocks for our watercolor paintings and artwork overall. I started my glazing with the bottle using a mixture of the original shadow color with ultramarine to give it more of a Payne's gray feel. I'm going to glaze it onto the side of the bottle that would contain the shadow, being sure to add color to any area where another object may overlap it. In this case, where the leaves overlap the bottle at the bottom and on the sides, I was sure to concentrate on adding glazes to the area where the neck of the bottle was to meet the silver screw on top, this area would definitely be darker. One, because it's where the separation in the two areas occur, and two, because the cap would be casting a shadow onto the area of the bottle directly under it. Because glazing also is directly linked to the technique of wet on dry, it has the tendency to leave a harsh line if you don't pay attention. To remedy this, I always rinse my brush, tap it off on a paper towel, and then using the clean damp brush, I blend the lines between the original layer and the glazed layer. The cap part of the bottle is pretty straightforward. I simply enhance the outline color to show the contrast between what would be the edges of the cap and the shiny part or the more metallic part. As I move into glazing the leaves, I am mixing the original base layer color with the gray mixture I made to make a darker tone glazing color. I am using this in the shadow areas and to add veins to the leaves. As I glaze, I am also starting to add different little details into the leaf area. Adding in linear strokes and broken lines can help elevate your painting in a snap. I also use the glazing technique to add definition to the perimeter of the leaves as well as the flower once I make it to that point of the video. This helps to add body, roundness, and an overall fullness to the objects that make up the painting. Deciding to leave out the white areas of the paper has worked out well. As I glaze on the more saturated color, you can automatically see the subject you are painting start to come to life. Again, adding to the overall body needed by the composition to look tangible. The great thing about this glazing was that by using consistent colors in my mixture, I was able to use the same dark to glaze all the greens. Well, with a slight adjustment by adding one or more color than the other, depending on the green I was glazing. I was sure to keep the glazing of the veins consistent on each leaf, depending on the cluster of leaves it was assigned to. Using a thinner brush to vein the leaves helped to keep thin straight lines while adding glazing to different parts of the leaf. At this point, friends, I think we need to stop for a minute and circle back to take a look at that up close moment we did with the glazing. This is also a perfect time to check and see how you all are feeling at this moment. So go ahead, jump in the comment section and let me know what are you thinking? How are you feeling about the glazing technique? Do you have any questions you need answered about it? Remember to not put too much pressure on yourself at one time. Relax. Take your time. Rewind the video if you need to. But most importantly, keep at it. As I move into adding glazes to the flower, I actually use the purple included in the set in its mass tone. This allowed the glazing to add richness to the painting, giving definition and much needed separation to the flower petals. Now here, once again, I am using that linear line work to add further detail to each petal. Let me show you that a little more closely. So here, you will see I am using the very tip of my brush with light pressure to make strokes that follow the contour of the petal. You want to keep the direction of the petal or leaf if you are painting greenery in mind to add to the overall realness of your composition. 
for the center, my glazing will actually be small circles to add in to the center detail of the flower. Using a mixture of the yellow ochre, cad yellow, and some mud from my palette, I made small connected circles that quickly developed into a believable flower center. Okay, my artsy friends, this is what our composition looks like after the glazing layer has been completed. Now, as I told you, after we finished the very first layer, if you would like to stop here, please feel free. You don't have to paint any more than you are comfortable with or any more than you would like to in one sitting. As for me, I'm going to push forward and add in more darts. I'm going to be finishing off the bottle label. I'm going to be using some water-soluble fountain pens that are colored in order to add a little bit more detail and line work to the overall composition. I may even go in and add a little bit more detail to the actual top on the bottom. Now, as we move forward, the rest of the video will be time-lapsed with a little music playing in the background. Afterwards, we'll meet back up to wrap up the video. So let's finish up the painting. Okay, friends, here's the point where we wrap everything on up. This is the finished product. I must say, I do kind of like it. I think it's pretty. <laughs> um, it came out pretty well. Hopefully, you guys are going to give this a shot, going to give this a try. Um, as I said, I will be linking the reference sort of outline in the photo description. Uh, I'm sorry, in the video description. Guys, if you saw anything along the course of this video that you found helpful, again, don't forget to sprinkle a little love. Give the video a thumbs up. Share because sharing is caring. Jump in the comments section as mentioned once before. Any questions that you have, as long as it's in my ability, I'll be happy to answer. And if not, I'll do everything I can to find the answer for you. You can check the video description for all of the relevant links. Come join us in the Thrifty Apprentice Facebook group. Come join us in the Patreon community. And as I tell you at the end of every single video, just keep creating.